Welcome to a new guide on the channel and on this one is the instant delay from unfiltered audio. Now this is not a review but a deep dive guide about this plugin. Now everything is in tiny chapters so if you look at the description or the timeline you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. If you like what I do remember to like and subscribe and if you want to buy me a coffee you can you just need to check the links at the description. Okay so let's talk about this delay this is a very simple but powerful delay. You can do standards delay, you know, a standard delay sound, or you can just separate repetitions by modulating them. And this is what, you know, takes this plugin to a different dimension. So first we're gonna cover the basic parts so we can get them out of the way. And then we are gonna be focusing on the more complex parts. And this is, uh, you know, very common for uh, unfiltered audio. And this is the first plugin I'm covering from this company, you know, from this uh, developer. And they make really cool plugins. Some of them are simple and some of them are really, really complex. And they look complex like this one. This, if you look this, this one, you know, it kind of looks a little bit, you know, difficult to understand, but it's actually super, super simple. Some other plugins from them are just, you know, a little bit more uh, kind of a difficult on the difficult side of the uh, <laughs> side of things. But uh, I'm going to be trying to cover them all. all. Right. So right from the start, if you go to a default, we always going to start from a default patch. You have a one eighth and it's tempo sync. So whatever is there you tempo that you're doing is going to sync it to that. So you can use subdivisions, right? So very, very simple. Now you can, of course, unsync this and it's going to go in seconds and you can go up to 10 seconds, which is a lot. Now, of course, this is going to be uh, too much. There we go. So pretty simple by double clicking is this is the time that we are using. But in this case, I'm just going to go and tempo sync. So we're going to use one eight. Right. So the controls right here are very important for us. Of course, you get your mix or blend control. If you go all the way down, you're just not going to get any repetitions. And if you go all the way to the other side, you're just going to be getting the repetition. So this is your blend control. How loud, of course, or, you know, how, how is going to be your blend? How much of your repetitions you want to hear? Very simple. Right. So then you have the drive. So the drive, the, this is what it does. And this is what the, the manual says. It says that it will saturate analog style. And this is right there on the manual. I'm just not, uh, you know, giving you my opinion. It says on the manual. So the signal uh, that goes that it's going to be delayed. So the delay signal, the process signal is the one that it's being driven. So right now, if I do something, nothing is going to happen. So if I drive it, it's going to be very loud. So be careful. It is that the, it's kind of a clipping the repetitions and that's cool. And remember that the input or the output or, of your synthesizer or whatever sound that you're using is going to matter right here. So if I go all the way down or go, you know, below one, the drive is going to kind of attenuate the sound or the repetitions. So using the drive, you need to control it with the mix control. Because the repetitions are going to be super loud if you if you crash them. Now this goes again into a different dimension when we use these controls. We can get that right there in a minute. And of course you can adjust your out. And this is the kind of the overall out of the of the uh, of the repetitions. So if I go all the way up, notice that the repetitions are super loud. So now of course the mix and the blend are just going to play a big part when you use the drive. So of course, then you have your feedback control and this is kind of, again, pretty important. Your feedback is the amount of repetitions that it's going, it's going to give you. And right now, of course, the delay sounds a little bit dull because we are not doing anything special, right? It's just pretty easy and standard controls that you get to pretty much any delay. Right, it sounds cool. Now, the source, the sound source I'm using, and I'm doing this on purpose, it's super mono. If I check the image, that is that it's super mono. And I'm doing this on purpose because one of the cool things that this can do is to give you that wide stereo image. So for now, I'm just going to go all the way down and I'm going to go back to default. So I want to talk about all the modes that you get right here. And this is going to give you this, you know, separation. So right now it's linked, which means that stereo left and right are going to do the same thing when we get the repetitions, just doing the same thing. But you have two options. You have the offset, for example. Now the offset, what it will do, it will offset the left from the right. Right now we are doing 1-8 and notice that right here says none. So if I play something, we are just getting the repetition, right? And that's cool. Now this one, when you start moving it, 
Notice that now we get a stereo separation. And what the offset means, it means that it will offset the right side from whatever is that you're doing on the left side. So if I go all the way to one, it's going to, and maybe go back to default, it's going to take a long time to give us the repetition. But this one is being offset from this timing. It's not used, it's not offsetting from the BPM. So this one is going to play left first, and then this one is going to play uh, next, uh, you know, after the left. There we go. So maybe it was too, you know, maybe too slow. There we go. So always the left is playing first and then it's playing the right. So this is what it means and that's why it's called offset. It's going to offset the right from the left. So it depends on what you have right here. You can create really cool sounds. Let me go to just one eight. And I'm going to go up on the feedback, maybe up on the drive and less mix. Notice that the uh, right here in the stereo image is just way different now. Maybe do a little bit less. Right. So again, you can go to the other side and maybe do something like that. Right. So. We are kind of a starting to enter into the cool side of things. You know how you can get something more, something extra, about, you know, with this plugin. Now, the offset is going to do that. Now, then, of course, you have the independent, which is what you could assume that, you know, what it will do is using the BPM. And of course, we are using subdivisions. You can go to tempo if you wish and offset it like that. But in this case, I'm going to be offsetting the left and the right. So now the right is listening to the BPM and it's doing its own own thing. And the left uh, side, it's doing the same thing. It's listening to the BPM and doing its own own thing. So you still get that separation, but it's a little bit different, right? So I'm going to go back to defaults and so far is a good delay, right? So just a nice delay, but it's just not something that we say, okay, you yeah, man, I really like this. I'm going to, I'm going to buy it. So, uh, you get standard controls. You can, uh, offset your left and your right. A lot of plugins can do that. But then of course you start getting this options and these ones are really, really cool. So if I do something like this, of course, we are going to be getting that feedback, right? But then you have this one. Now, this one, what it does, it will kind of uh, listen to the left and the right, and it will just kind of uh, offset the timings a little bit more. And it's kind of a randomizing the timings on the left and the right. So if I do something like 50%, we can really notice the difference. Notice that we get the stereo image and we can see it right here on the imager. So this one, it is going to be listening to this. So it's offsetting the timings on each repetition. Now, of course, you can go really crazy and it's going to offset it by a lot. And notice that every time I play something, the times are just a little bit different. Now, of course, if you don't want to do that because it's a little bit crazy, you just can do a little bit and you're going to still get that separation, that stereo image separation. Now the repetitions, of course, at times on the left and the right are closer. So you are not going wild, but you're still getting that separation. And this is, you know, something very important with delays, especially, you know, when you're using a digital delay. Sometimes the repetitions are just going to be right in the uh, way of the original uh, sound source. And uh, if uh, they are too loud or they are too bright, they're just going to be standing on top of your original sound source, which is not that cool. So just by doing this, you just can split them and you can let the original shine. But if you cannot argue that when I play something, the repetitions are kind of uh, in the way. So one cool thing that you get with tape echo or you get with, uh, you know, Bach Brigade uh, type of delays is that the repetitions have a different sound. They are, you know, uh, darker or maybe they have a different type of saturation, which is something that we can get with the drive as well. Uh, but, you know, they are different. So when they are different, we are separating them from the original sound and we get something else. So this is the cutoff and the resonance. So by, by, by default, you're just not doing anything. You're just not cutting and you're not doing resonance. So if I start cutting them and I cut a lot and I go up on my repetitions, let me do something, you know, really noticeable. I'm going to do something like that. We are going to be separating the repetitions more 
from the original sound, so now they sound darker. Notice that they sound really dark, now it's kind of a closer to, I want to say Bucket Brigade, because that's not how it works, but you know, the repetitions are darker. We are separating them from the original sound source, so we can, we can get a better blend. And the resonance, since this is cutting a frequency, is a filter, uh, we are going to be, and of course this is only applied to the uh, process signal, you know, the repetitions. You can use the resonance, and this is going to give you a resonance, a resonant peak, because you're doing a cutoff. Right? And notice it says right, right there is a 12 dB per octave. So by boosting this, you're going to get that resonance peak, resonant peak, which is really, really cool. And you don't get this on a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of delays. So now we are kind of entering to, into the kind of a, the unique of this delay, you know, kind of a territory. So yeah, this is pretty unique to this, uh, you know, this uh, filter. And this is what this company does. They give you something simple and then they start adding functions and things we can do that will kind of uh, take it to a different level. So of course, again, we can cut and we can add that resonance and even modulate this control to get a different thing from the repetitions. And if I go to the feedback and do a little bit more, Right. So right now we are, I'm doing everything manually, but we can use the modulation. This is kind of a big part of this delay. It's kind of the start of the show, the start of the show. And uh, but for now we are just going to be uh, kind of a finish with this section, so we can move on to this. So right now when we do the cutoff, it's cutting low, high frequencies. It's a low pass filter. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to the high pass. So when we do high pass, we are going to be cutting low frequencies. I'm sorry, high frequencies, low frequencies, because we are letting high pass. Of course, if I go right here, we are not doing anything, it's off. But as we go up, we are cutting this much. So now all the low frequencies go away and we just get the high frequencies. And then again, this works with the resonance. Right, so right now the, the sound of the synthesizer is super dull. I mean, super dull. If we have a better sound source and then we add the delay, it's just gonna sound a lot, a lot better, of course. But right now, just it's just gonna keep it like there. Um, you know, just to, we can learn the controls. This is just about learning the controls. And again, you get some really cool things out of this. Now uh, you're gonna get the bandpass. Uh, you get the bandpass right here. So the bandpass is just a bandpass. It's gonna cut highs and it's gonna cut lows. And the resonance right here plays a part. Because if I go all the way down, this is of course gonna be more more focused on the mid on the mids. If I go up, you know we're not gonna get a lot. And if I go low. You're not going to get a lot. So it's going to be the sweet spot. It's going to be right here. And as you do more resonance, of course, since this is a band pass, we're going to be exposing that band pass a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk about the modulation section. It's going to take a little while because we have a lot of options. And right from the start, uh, I'm going to go and maybe again turn this off. And we have a very dull sound right here. I'm just going to make it bigger because we are going to be getting just a little bit, you know, just a better sound. Right now it's just super dull. It sounds dull. So maybe I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to keep that shape, do a little bit of sync and just a little bit of blend. It sounds a little bit better to my ears. Better than before, for sure. All right. So now, of course, we're gonna turn on the uh, the plugin, and of course, we get we get some delay. So okay. So we are gonna be talking about this, but how can we use this? Uh, how we, we can modulate this with all the options we have right here at the bottom. So when you right click on each modulator, you can just duplicate it, remove it, or duplicate it. Right. So that's what you can do. In this case, I'm just gonna maybe remove all. 
So how can you add new modulators? You go to the plus and you add a modulator. And by default, you get the sign LFO. And you uh, you can change it right here. But, you know, before we do that, we're going to cover uh, this one. And by doing this, we're going to learn pretty much uh, not all the controls, but a lot of the controls that we will use on the other ones. So, okay, so this is a modulator. What it will do, it will modulate whatever uh, param or whatever pro property you connect it to. So how, how do, you, how do you, you connect it? You just click and drag to whatever connection you have right here. So in this case, I'm just going to do the cutoff. So since this is a sine wave, of course, it's going to go up and down. And if you have a, a notion of synthesis, you know, if you like to use synthesizers and you understand how LFO works, um, you know, all this type of things, uh, it's going to be very easy for you. Now, if you don't have it, you know, you don't use them and you don't, don't know what an LFO, a low frequency oscillation is, it's going to be, you know, a little bit harder for you. Uh, but still, I'm just going to go all the way on all the things that you can do. But this is, you know, go hands in hand with the uh, hands uh, with uh, with synthesis. So what we are doing, we are just connecting a sine LFO, a low frequency oscillator, and we are instructing this value in how to move. And now it's going up and down, and it's going like this, right? It's following this motion up and down. Of course, right here you have the frequency. You can go up, and you're gonna go faster, or you're gonna go slower if you go down. Right now we are uh, in uh, sync, so we are going to use we are using subdivisions but right here you can go in free mode and it's going to use it you're going to be able to use it in hertz so you are not synced so of course you can go really slow really slow or you can go really fast right so by double clicking you're just going to go to the default value in this case i'm just going to use uh, subdivisions i'm going to go a little bit faster something like maybe something like that doesn't matter Okay, so right now we are connecting this value to here. And this is what we have a knob right here. So this is the attenuator. Now this one, if you go all the way down, notice that it's trimming whatever it is that we are doing. So we are doing less modulation. That's pretty much what an attenuator means. means. It's going to attenuate it. In this case, notice that we have a break point right here. When we are right in the center, it's doing nothing. But then if we go the other way, it's going to be bipolar. So it's going to go in negatives. But the motion is still the same because we are using a, a bipolar kind of a, you know, a sine wave or a modulation. So we don't really see the difference, but we will in a couple minutes. So, okay, that's it. So you can attenuate the modulation by doing this. You can change the speed, the, the, the rate with this one. And right here you have the amp. So of course, since this is a sine wave, it's a signal is going to have an amplitude. If it's really small, the movement is going to be, you know, less. But if you go up on the amp, it's just going to go and do a lot more. And, you know, it's going to go fall in and fall out. So you're going to need to kind of uh, change this in order to uh, kind of, uh, you know, do whatever it is that you want to do. Maybe you don't want to do a lot. You want to do, you want to do just a little bit. So you can do a little bit of that. If you go the other way, notice it goes in negatives. And this is what I was telling you before. It's the same thing. We don't see the difference because we are not kind of uh, hearing this, but this is gonna go and start it on negative ways. It's like inverting the, the face of the waveform, pretty much. We are going the other way. Now, talking about face, I'm gonna do just a little bit. You have the face. So this one, it will not invert the face. What this will do will shift the face, it will, but it will just kind of uh, move or offset the face, the starting of this face. So if right here on this modulation, we start on this point, and then we go up and then we go down. When you move the face, it will not start from this point. It's maybe going to start from the peak and then going down and up and down and up. So in each cycle, you know, you're just altering the face. Now, we don't see the difference because this is a constant motion. It's never restarting. So if I change the face, and you need to look at right here, I change the face and notice that it's kind of a lagging at some point. And it's because on each cycle, it's trying to start from a different part on the face. So it's like, you know, it's like that. Now, this is very useful when you uh, use a trigger right here that we're going to talk about, uh, about in a second. And we're going to, you know, talk about that. But first, notice that it's, we are going up and we are going down, right? And this is because this uh, modulation is bipolar. And that is just what it is. So right here, you have the plus and the minus. So this is going to turn the bipolar to unipolar. So if you're cut off, you're cutting this much and then you run a modulation, the modulation is going to be from this point and then up, but it will not go to negatives, right? Which is completely different from what we have before. If I do something like that, it's going to go up and down. And let me just go on up and up. 
And if we connect this right here, we can we can see the difference, or we, can, we are going to be able to hear the difference. We're going up and down in values. If I do it unipolar, this is going to be completely different. Now I'm doing a lot of amp. Let me do a little bit less. So you get a different sound. So you're not going to super low values. Let me do a little of this, a little of that, so we can get something a little bit better. Right, and the uh, bipolar com sounds completely different because we are going to, you know, lower values. We are cutting a lot. So at some points, you're not going to be able to hear the repetitions because you're cutting a lot. Now, maybe you're asking, why do we get a lot of different attenuators? And it's because maybe I want to connect this to this. It's going to do the same thing that we were doing before. And for now, I'm just going to go to, uh, to unipolar. But on this one, remember, it will attenuate the signal. So maybe on this one, you want to do a little bit uh, less with the same LFO. So you can reuse the same LFO and you don't have to create a new one. Right? And you're just using different values. Okay, so let me just go a little bit slower so we can see how this works. And uh, I'm going to go maybe you, uh, you, bipolar right now. And I'm going to disconnect this one because it's just a little bit confusing. I'm going to go start right here. So we know that right now the sign LFO is going up and it's going down. It's going up and it's going down. Now the thing is that sometimes when I play a key, notice that this is not restarting. It's going up and down and it doesn't care if I, rest I play a key. It doesn't care. So by enabling this, Notice that we see right here the re-trigger. So this one will just uh, re-trigger on demand. Notice that it's never restarting and I'm clicking on this to restart the waveform. So uh, when I click, it's going to restart from the beginning of the waveform. And notice it's always uh, there, right here at this point. And I'm going to just keep on clicking it. And it's going to restart there. And this is because we are just uh, changing the face. If I restart it, it's going to start from a different place, which is going to be about there. So remember that changing the face will change the beginning of the waveform, especially if you're re-triggering. Right? So yeah, that's something that you need to be aware of. And this, of course, uh, works on both things, on uni and bipolar. So let me do something like that, maybe. And I'm going to be re-triggering. It just starts from a different place. That's pretty much it. Now it's going to be that. Oh, let me do it. There we go. And if I go there, um, pretty much right there. So yeah. Now, of course, later in a couple of minutes, we're going to learn some other, you know, modulators that can listen to whatever it is that you're playing or whatever's coming, you know, in, so, in sound comes in and you can connect to this so you can re-trigger the waveforms. But that's it, that's pretty much the whole, you know, what this sign LFO can do. It's a pretty simple modulator. It's just connect it and it's going to do whatever it is that you want to do right here. And uh, one more thing that you need to learn is that you can add a lot of modulators, just something like this, and it's going to get a little bit crazy when you add a lot of modulators. So what you can do on each modulator, when you click on the icon, right here is going to trim it down and it's going to of course give you the different uh, connectors so you can modulate the other values so in this case i'm going to go right here and now why do we get you know all of this and of course this is going to be the amp the the frequency and the face so it's because i can bring this a different uh sine wave a different modulator and instead of modulating this we are going to be modulating some of the other controls that we have right here so maybe this one is going to change the frequency so of course now we will have we will be modulating the frequency so we have a different motion right there at the top. So let me just go back right here. And this is just changes. And same thing right here, you know, I can maybe go and alter the face at the same time or maybe I can just go and just, you know, mess around mess, mess around with the amp. And we are going to be starting different of course motions by modulating modulators. You cannot do this with a lot of, of course, with a lot of plugins. 
All right, so let me just bring a different module later. I'm gonna go right here and we're gonna go to the next one. Now, some of the controls, now it's gonna get easier right now because a lot of the controls, we kind of already know them. And maybe I'm gonna go right there and I'm gonna be connecting this to the cutoff. So we can see that it's going up and down. Right now it's bipolar. We can make it unipolar to make it simple, you know, to understand. So this is a saw or it's gonna be a triangle. Now, when you're right at the middle, you know, the 50% on the shape is going to be a, it's going to be a triangle. And you might be fooled into thinking that this is a sine wave. Uh, but this is not sine wave, it is a triangle. And notice that it's lagging at some point. Let me do a little bit more amp. At some point, it's just going to be lagging right here on the breakpoint. Right in the 50%, it's just going to lag. It's because, you know, it's a, it's a triangle. Now, the trick is that if you go all the way down, you're going to be turning this uh, triangle into a saw. So it's abruptly starts right there at the top. Let me do a little bit more amp. I'll restart right there at the top and then ramps down. And of course, this is going to do the same thing when we are working on bipolar. It's going to abruptly start up and then go and ramps down. Now, if you go all the other way to the shape, you're going to be getting the same saw. You're not kind of a really changing anything. But what you can do, you can select some values uh, in between, maybe something like there, and you are going to be getting a blend of a triangle and the saw. This is kind of the purpose of the shape. Right, and you still get your frequency right here. Let me maybe go to a saw right there because it's really obvious. Uh, you can get your frequency. You can, of course, uh, sync it or unsync. Uh, pretty simple. And we could have already talked about the face. This is going to be changing where it starts. So when I start or re-trigger the waveform, it's going to start on different places. Now, of course, this is if, uh, of course, you are re-triggering. We're going to talk about this in a second. Uh, then, of course, you get your amp, same thing. And notice that all the options are the same that we, what we get on the sine wave. But it's, of course, we are working with a different waveform. And what happens if I want to go back to saw? So you can go back to saw. It's a good, you know, let you do it. And you don't uh, kind of uh, remove that connection. You're going to keep it. Right? So pretty simple now, right? Okay, so what we can do, we can go to the square. And of course, this square is going to be the same deal, but a different animal. It's just a different waveform. It's going to go all the way up or all the way down. Right now, it's just doing that. Let me just go simple like that. And I'm going to use unipolar. And that's how the the square uh, kind of, a, you know, work, works. Goes all the way up and all the way down. It's kind of an on and off. Since we are going to positives and negatives, it's going to go up and then down. Now, uh, the width, maybe you are going to be able to see it. Maybe not. I'm going to go right here. Now, on the square form, on the square, on the square wave, of course, you have the positive and then the negative. And we're going full up or full down. So when you change the width, one of the sides, either a positive or negative, it depends on how this works, uh, is going to be longer than the other one. So now, if you take a look, notice that when we go to positives, it's super short, but negative is just going to be a, a lot longer. It's going to stay a lot more time on the negative side. And if I go all the way down, you know, is going to be all, all negatives, pretty much. But of course, you can select something in between, maybe go the other way, and now it's going to stay more on the up part and less on the down part. Now, we're going really slow right here, so maybe we can go faster and, you know, get something a little bit more useful out of this. Maybe we can connect the resonance and even connect the feedback. Why not? Really cool sound. All right. So this is, of course, what the square wave is going to do. All the same controls are, you know, all the controls are just pretty much the same that we did on the saw and the sine wave. The only thing that changes is going to be the width. Now I'm going to remove it and I'm going to start over because I want to add a new modulation. And the next one is going to be the input follower. So this one, it's really important for us. Now, what this one, what will do, it will listen to whatever incoming signal you're getting, and it's just going to be triggering something. Now, if I do something like this, and, you know, maybe I'm going to be playing something, notice that it's moving when I play a key, and it's because it's following the sound that fits in, and it creates an envelope for us, and that envelope is just going to provide some kind of a modulation right here. It depends on what you're doing. If you're sustaining, notice that the sound is what is driving this modulation. So 
it's always it always depends on what you're doing now of course the amp is going to be doing just that which is going to be wider or you know more a lot more a lot or maybe a lot less and then you have the smooth which depends on what what is the sound source if your sound source is very choppy i mean you have a lot of up and ups and downs the if you go all the way down to smooth notice it's going crazy right here and it depends on you know the sound that it's going in right now we have unison and it's stereo so we have a lot of movement so the smooth is going to smooth those transitions notice that it's pretty much there if I bring it down, we're gonna have a little bit more movement. But yeah, but that's what it's going to do. It's gonna smooth the transitions of the modulation. So that's it, that's pretty much the envelope four. Now what you can do with this one and you can do with the other ones, let me just maybe bring something like this. I'm going to bring maybe a triangle, something like that. And I'm gonna be connecting this to the cutoff. And maybe do it to the resonance as well. So we can, you know, we can hear something. So we are gonna be going fast, something like that. And I'm gonna do a little bit more. Now, I don't want this to do this motion. I want to start from the beginning every time I play a key or every time that, you know, this is triggering. So right here, this trigger is going to listen to something to re-trigger. Now, what we can do, we can use the envelope follower that we have right here that triggers every time that we play a new key. So this one is going to be re-triggering this. Now notice how the, now it moves. It's go ups and down, up and down, really smoothly. When I play a key, it's going to restart from the beginning, right? That's the whole point. Now, of course, if our sound is constant, it will not re-trigger. But as soon as I stop and play it again, it's going to give us that envelope and that envelope is going to be re-triggering. This is of course not foolproof, but you know, it's gonna, it can do the trick. All right, so I'm gonna go back and start from the scratch and I'm gonna maybe delete this one and I'm gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be the macro control. Now this is just a macro, it's something very simple. Let's say I get, I'm gonna be connecting this to this and this to that and I'm gonna be doing something like that. Again, it's just a macro. We have an amp, which is the amplitude of whatever it is that we are doing. And of course, if we go up, it's gonna go up. And if we go down, it's gonna go down. That's pretty much what it's going to be doing. It's just a macro control. Now, the thing is that what you can do with this one, you can connect this to different sources and you can control the different sources, which is a single attenuator. Pretty simple. Now, of course, this, you know, uh, really works when you bring a different modulator that will be modulating whatever value that you have right here. And now this macro is going to be controlling different sources and you're going to be controlling it with the, this sine LFO. That's, you know, kind of a, the whole point. And with this one, you're just going to attenuate the different sources and do whatever it is that you want. But the idea of a macro is that you can control several things or do different types of modulations uh, with one single thing. So now you need to go to sine wave and go all the way to the other ones. You just can control it a little bit better with the macro controls. All right, so I'm gonna go and we'll remove all the modulators and I'm going to reset back to default and I'm gonna be deleting this one. So again, the macro control, something very simple. You just, it's a macro, right? So you control different things with, with one, single, uh, one, one single control, pretty much. So then we have the next one, which is the sample and hold. Now the sample and hold, is uh is random and uh what how it works and notice it says noise and it's because usually when you work with sample and hold you need a, a sound source uh to get this randomness now noise is a very unpredictable sound source so when you are doing sample and hold and you take uh you know the incoming signal input is noise is going to be random because the noise is random if you're doing it from maybe a square uh, waveform or maybe a triangle let's say something like that is a predictable waveform so the movement it's not going to be random it's going to be very predictable now still when you're using noise it's just random that's what it means so i'm going to go right there and i'm going to be doing something like that and notice that it's just going to be moving up and down and we cannot predict when it's going to go next, if it's up or down and by how much. Now I'm going to be doing something a little bit faster so we can clearly see this. Now if I go up on the amp, we can see that it's just random. 
And again, it's just random. I'm gonna do it unipolar. And maybe if we go up or maybe go to freak to frequencies to hertz, we're gonna be listening to the influence of, of the of the sample and hold. Which is again random. Okay, so of course, even though it's random, you can change some values right here. I'm gonna go back to Hertz and back to Sync and just gonna do something slower so we can really see it. Now, of course, we can still change the face and this is just gonna be altering the face of whatever it is that you're doing. Same thing we, we uh, talked earlier. You can modulate this on a different fashion. You're gonna get different variations of what you're doing. Then you get this slew. So notice that the, uh, and I'm going to make it bipolar so we can see this. So when it goes to the next kind of a iteration or the next position, you notice that it go, it's going up and down and it's going very abruptly. There's no transition, no smoothing. So this loo is going to do that. It's going to give you that. This is going to be giving you some smoothness between transitions. So instead of just hard going, you know, going hard to the next and to the next one, it's just going to smoothly kind of uh, go to the next modulation, you know, to the next position. All right, so I'm going to start from the beginning and I'm going to click on that one, remove it. And uh, we're going to talk about the step sequencer. And this is the last thing we need to cover in this one. You can do Rolly light pad, which is something I don't have. So I cannot really kind of show you something that you can control with, a, you know, with that controller. So we're going to go to the sequencer. And we're gonna notice that we can do a lot of things with the sequencer. It's pretty interesting. So at the end of the day, we want to modulate something, but the steps, uh, the amount of steps that we will do right here will control pretty much the modulation. Now, what you can do right here, you can draw. So what you can do is just click and drag, and you're gonna be draw drawing some kind of a shape that will do pretty much the modulation, whatever it is that you're doing right here. Right now, the red position, the red dot, it's going to show you which step is playing right now. And this one is going to be the beginning. And this one is going to be the end of the, uh, you know, the steps. So in this case, what we want to do, we can go maybe up on the frequencies and we can go faster and we can do the same good, good stuff that we will be, we, uh, we've been doing, which is, uh, going faster or doing sync. We can do bipolar, which is what we are doing right now. We are going to positives and then we are going to negatives. And we can see it right here. All right, so I'm going to go maybe faster than this. Maybe like that. There we go. So now we have a, you know, a transitioning up and down following this instruction. Now, what if you want uh, maybe not go to uh, negatives? You don't want a bipolar. So again, you're just going to be making it, uh, making a unipolar. And you just can maybe do something, maybe something more randomish right here. Something like that. Let's just say we do something like this and something like that. And it's just going to be following that instruction uh, with the step sequencer, right? Pretty easy. Just like the sample and hold, of course, is going to go all the way up and all the way down if you have something like this. But the transitioning, it's always uh, a, a little bit like that. It's just all the way up and all the way down. Now, of course, the slew will just kind of smooth the transitions. Notice that now it's pretty smooth. So then you have the start. So the start, of course, or maybe you, the length, the length is just going to change how much steps you can do. Since you can do only 16, you can just maybe do it four steps and just keep it simple. Or you can use 16, of course. Now the start, what it will do, it will kind of a shift the position of where you can start and where it's going to be ending. So if you start on the number eight, for example, right here, this is going to be the start. It's going to go all the way right here and end on the number, uh, on the number seven, which is, you know, the previous one to the eight. It's going to be a full cycle. And then, of course, it starts at this point. Now, of course, when you shift it and you already started this, uh, you're not going to notice the difference. But when you go right here, this is the reset. When you uh, tap or maybe just click on reset, it's going to start all over again, the, uh, you know, the sequence. So when you tap it, it's just going to be doing that. All right. So it's always restarting from that point. And of course, you can uh, go right here to the amp. And this is just, of course, going to change how it will affect the modulation. We kind of already know that. And for now, I'm just going to go back all the way to the start. So you have different modes right here. You can go forward, which is what we are doing right now. It starts right here and then moves forward. And then you have reverse, which is, you know, pretty easy. 
Then you have ping pong one, which is going to be pretty much the same thing. It's going to ping pong between, you know, the start and the end. And then you have the ping pong two. And if I select ping pong two, it's going to start up and then go down. There we go. And I'm going to go back to one just to show you the difference. Notice that when you go to ping pong one, it goes to this step and then goes to the next one, right? Just going to, and let me just do it faster so we can get that first. So yeah, it's going to go here and then go up and down, up and down. So the ping pong two is the exact same thing. But notice that when we go to this one, this one, it's a kind of a lasting two steps. And same thing when we start. It's twice as longer, twice as longer. That's the only difference. But you're still doing ping pong going up and down pretty much. And then you have random, you know, self-explanatory. I feel, I feel like I don't need to explain anything at this point on here. All right, so I'm going to go back to forward. And I'm going to do maybe something like that. Maybe there we go. And I'm going to go down this loop because right now it's just, you know, not letting us doing much, maybe doing something like that. There we go. Now, remember that when you re-trigger or reset, it's going to always start from the, from this spot, you know, from the beginning. But then what, what's going to happen with the trigger? I'm going to go slower. So this is going to be going really slow. So when you go right here to trigger, the trigger will make the step go to the next one. It doesn't matter, it's going at this uh, rate. Whenever you tap this, it's going to move to the next one. So I'm going to be tapping this multiple times. All right, so notice that it's just going faster through the steps. And this is because I'm clicking on them many, you know, very kind of a quickly. So this is what the trigger is going to do. It's a little bit different from the other ones. This one is just going to the next step. And this one is going to be starting the sequence from the beginning. Now, when you, whenever you trigger or reset, this is kind of a, a waiting for you to go to positive. And maybe, you know, it's a little bit confusing and vague. I'm going to bring a new modulator. So this sign LFO is going to be bipolar. So it's going to go up and then it's going to go down. We already know that. And maybe, uh, maybe I'm going to bring a square. It's going to be a little bit more obvious. So the square goes up and then it goes down. So the, uh, when you bring this uh, to the trigger or the re-trigger, and if you use this waveform, whenever this goes up, it goes to positives, it's going to trigger or re-trigger. Now, of course, what we can do, we can just connect this right here. And at some point, this is going to be re-triggering whatever, you know, we are doing right here with the square LFO. So when the square LFO goes to positive, it's re-triggering and going back to the reset. That's what, what's going on pretty much. If I do the other one, maybe I'm going to go, go to this one. It's going to show you right there with the red light. Kind of hard to see when it's, re it's triggering or resetting or re-triggering. So when that happens, it's just advancing one step, you know, further. Now, what you can do, of course, this depends on what you do right here. If this is super slow, you can have something super slow like this. But you can offset the timings, maybe make it a little bit slower. And at some point, you can offset the timings from this one and the timings on this one. And it's going to be resetting on different parts or maybe in a random part. And of course, you're going to be starting uh, start to get different things. This is happening after four bars, which is a lot. But maybe we can do it, you know, do something like that and get something a little bit faster, and you're going to be kind of stuck right here, of course. But this is going to be, this is completely up to you. You need to do some experimentation, some playing around with this. Now, remember that you can do something like this and make your life easier when you are doing, uh, creating a lot of patches. All right, so I'm going to go back to default, and uh, we are pretty much done with the whole plugin. And it's a very simple plugin, uh, but once you start bringing the modulations, this can, you know, take you to a different land, to different places. Now, you can randomize the params right here. If you go there, it's just going to give you different params. Sometimes you're just not going to get something super useful when you randomize. But sometimes, if you're lucky, you're going to get some very interesting sounds like this one. There you go. So let me go right here. You have the factory presets. Of course, you have some other examples that you can really use. And uh, of course, it's going to give you some examples that where, where you can, uh, you know, learn, do some learning.
All right, so that's it. That's pretty much the 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 whole thing, and uh, it's a cool delay. You know, with very simple and you know very simple options, very simple delay. But you know, it can take you to different places when you do modulations and you kind of uh, pair it with maybe a, a reverb or something like that. Just can you know get some really cool sounds. Now, of course, if you like this, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee because you like what I do, you can just check the description or, uh, you know, just check the description. You have links for Patreon, you have PayPal, you have, uh, you know, now you have the YouTube thanks. So, you know, if you want to buy me coffee, you can. All right. So thanks for watching and see you on the next one.